Right, this is going to be another episode of Banter Give and Go. If you didn't check in on the last episode, we basically picked a specific series to follow. So we decided we were going to follow the Nuggets versus the Timberwolves because, spoiler, I knew that would be the best series of them all. Obviously, the Mavs Thunder one was never going to live up to the hype in the same way. Now, we'll not only discuss that, but then we'll obviously tease the Western Conference Finals. Let's be real, the West is the, the league to watch. Hence, by the way, here's what actually gives away that the East is incredibly weak, is they've now done this twice, Maui. The Celtics have dared to lose two games ever this whole playoff run. And every time they lose, people for real talk like they can't possibly win the NBA championship like that. <laughs> like, which you know, it's total nonsense, but it just goes to emphasize how bad the East is right now. Like, spoiler, the second basically, like Derek Brunson got injured on the Knicks. Like, it was just over. Like, that whole, you can just ship the whole conference. They may as well have just automatically <laughs> seeded the Celtics into the finals, but sort of true. So we're watching, obviously, the good conference, the beast coast the actual one that has real basketball. And by the way, this series did live up to the actual hype that you might have hoped for before. Like, if you think about it, on the last episode we did was, I think, when they were down, it was just after the first game, wasn't it? Wasn't one, it? One, zero, one zero T-Wolves up. Yeah, one so we even though I will say two quick things. One, can people who've just had their first beer maybe shut up and let the rest of the bar talk? Like, bro, do you know how embarrassing it is that even people like Bill Simmons were going like, oh, are the Wolves just going to sweep the Nuggets as well then after like 2-0? Like, this is your first day in the NBA, Bill Simmons. Like, what are you I talking know. about, you lunatic? And then secondly, right, there are people who do want it to just be that like, whoever's doing well is just going to like destroy the whole NBA. Like, this is obviously a great series coming into it. And by the way, it absolutely absolutely lived up to the billing. I mean, the actual irony is, even though you didn't obviously mean it in that way, it did end up actually being the Wolves winning in seven, which I think was your prediction at the end mm -hmm. of the last episode. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that is what I predicted. Yeah, the people that are basically self-reporting when they say that, oh, it's a sweep now after one game or two games, it's just like, Okay, like I said that they were going to I said they were going to win in 7 and the only reason I I was going to say Nuggets in 7 before the series started, but we were we did record that first podcast after the first victory from the Wolves and that's basically what swayed me. Just barely barely changing my prediction by a single by a single winner basically as to who wins game 7 there just because I saw so much in that opening game from them. It's kind of like the same people that do that stuff are kind of the ones to me that just say like Oh, like, I mean, because we obviously have some Counter-Strike crossover fans. It's sure. just that people are going to be like, oh, you know, like, he's just going to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. It's like, Donk's going to be the GOAT. Zywoo's going to be the GOAT. Like, it's like, it just it's just like a year. It's just like a tournament. You know, it's like, it's like, what, what are we thinking? Like, it's like the same people that think, like, you should just give everybody time because everybody will linearly progress. That's not how this works. Like, this, people... People, like the team that just won or j the individual that just played well will not always just linearly improve or logarithmically improve. Like they are, sometimes they go down. Sometimes things happen. Sometimes their opponents level up. And that is what I think we ha have that happened in this game. It's that the Nuggets leveled back up from what they showed in games one and game two. And they showed that this was going to be the probably... I don't know. If the finals deliver something better than this, I'm going to be really pleasantly surprised. Maybe the Western Conference Finals, but that might have just been the series of this year's playoffs. No, no, that, that was actually unironically one of the better playoff series, like from beginning to end I've seen in years. Like, I actually didn't even, like, it, like pretty swear, even the games where one team got, like, semi-blown out were for good reason. It wasn't like it was just, like, random. You just throw all a die and that one that happened to have, like... Those were games where, like, for example, the Wolves did start out playing awesome defense and had them completely solved. Then later in the series, they had their own issues scoring. So all of a sudden, that was why the dynamic was flipping back. By the way, the point I would just draw out initially before we get into the specifics of this series is this. Another analytical mistake they make all the time in sports ball. So it's a perfect time to bring it up now as we've got teams like... The obvious ones, the Thunder just eliminated, right? Which is what you do is this, Maui. It's the hackiest take of all time. But they do it all the time in esports too. What you do is it's it's essentially saw at the major, mate. You're supposed to go, well, you know what? What a great effort, though. Look how close they were. And I'll tell you what, they're going to learn from this experience. They're going to go back home and they're going to improve. And when they come next time, hey, you better watch out. There is no next time. Like The reason I gave that example there, guys, is you all know that by the time the next major happens, in your brain, you're not really 
really thinking, well, I bet I saw have been fucking cooking. Because, you know, in the meantime, every team's been cooking. Everyone's trying to win the major every time it comes around. So similarly, right, even though I do like when teams like the Thunder, like, a, you know, like there's this potential there, the players are developing. It's like the window exists based on the window. Like, it's not about, like, feel-good factors. Like, if that team, which it isn't right now, isn't good enough to win the NBA, they're not magically just going to be better next year. And then, spoiler, there's plenty of teams are going to scramble after every single year and make roster moves a la Counter-Strike, which is why actually, like the irony in Counter-Strike, for example, is if you are the little minnow like an ence that upsets the table, you are, you yourself better make upgrades because almost certainly everyone else in response to you is just going to make all roster moves, sign your players, adapt to what you're doing. So I do think that part is always overblown. Like people do treat it like as far as you make it in the playoffs is like a save point on a game, Maui. And it's like next yeah. time you can get back to that. Let's see if, you know, this time Lara Croft makes it over the ravine. And it's like, it doesn't really work that way, guys. Like I actually think, by the way, just to quickly put a pin in that particular topic, I actually think there's a lot of teams in this playoffs that will be going, hey, we looked pretty pretty good. We got quite far. And they'll all think the same thing. It's the opposite. I actually think this was the wide open playoffs, mate. In fact, the fact that the Nuggets have lost now shows you how wide open it is. That's that's why the ultimate irony really might be this, Maui. There really is a world. I'm going to give you like a little prescient prediction, Paul Atreides style. There's a very real world where even though I always did think the Celtics was a top two or three team, they almost default win the championship when like the Mavs fuck around and inexplicably make the finals somehow. Like, and then, <laughs> yeah. and then and, you know, Luke is injured. Who knows how many games Kyrie can say? Like, there's actually a world where the Celtics almost just auto win the championship, which won't mean they were like an all time great team. But that's what a messy playoff from this has been. In fact, that's actually the reason I also think that it shows how strong the West is. Mate, you'd have had a really hard time predicting these outcomes at the beginning of the playoffs. Oh, right. I mean, for my money, I would have put the Nuggets as the eventual champions at the start of the playoffs. But. Something about just watching the the Timberwolves a lot this season kind of made me like my heart was sort of for the Timberwolves. And I'm glad that they've kept up this level of form. But in terms of like the first seed being the Thunder and they're just such a young roster, like they were they were pretty healthy throughout the season. They had a lot of good pieces. Some of their pieces were hard to deal with. And I'm a little I'm, I'll say I'm a little bit surprised they didn't actually beat the Mavs. But, you know, like the Mavs has just so much skill. And it just seems like they've been they've actually been the ones that have been linearly improving because when they got that initial Kyrie signing, it didn't look like it was going to work out for them at all. But now it's like everybody's starting to gel at this time. But like in a weird way, it feels like it's kind of like the first season of gelling for so many of these rosters. Like whereas before you would have seen like the Warriors, the Suns, the Lakers be the guys on top. Now it's like the first season. It's weirdly happening, happening concurrently that the Thunder, the Wolves, the the Mavs, are all gelling at the same time. Like all three of those teams are starting to just put their shit together. And that's why when you say this stuff about like, yeah, it's not a save point. It's because all of them should be looking to upgrade because all of them feel like they're within, within arm's reach of the trophy now. And so I imagine that, for example, the Thunder, they might bring a little bit more veteran savvy into their lineup. I imagine that the Nuggets will probably upgrade one of their pieces. Like maybe uh, maybe like MPJ goes goes like they maybe send him somewhere. And I feel like even the Wolves right now, like it's uh, in a weird, weird way. If you get this close, if you get to the Western Conference Finals for or the Eastern Conference Finals for either of these two teams or for any of these four teams, except with the exception of the Celtics, I feel like you're going to think to yourself, we, sh we shouldn't do anything like we we're so close. We should just try to keep improving, but it's like you could have just as easily gotten bounced in the first round. You could have just as easily gotten bounced in the second round. This was so, so wide open. I think in terms of like expert predictions across a lot of these series, very split down the line. Uh, a lot of people just predicting game sevens in general, like Vegas lines weren't super in favor of one team or the other either, like very, just very balanced across the board. And so it, this would be, this is like, I'll just say this. This is like where real, true Hall of Fame general managers are made. Ones that can still, that not, that don't have the results oriented thinking of saying, we made it this far and just looking at it as logically as you possibly can, looking at the numbers, breaking it all down in terms of what went well for you, what went bad for the other teams, and saying, we need to make some hard decisions if we actually want to give ourselves a real shot at being a champion as opposed to, let's just see how it goes. 
I also just think like it, it's actually one of the reasons why I'm very interested when we talk a little bit later about what the actual future for the Wolves team is because the problem is I do think that it's extremely rare that you ever win with like young star players in the NBA like you have to almost have like a perfect confluence of like circumstances around yourself so it's still hard for me to pick them to win the championship I notice no one else is doing it either mate I'm with you for me the entire time through the playoffs my logic went like this essentially if people want the analogy it's a bit like what I've done the last few years with Faze Clan when there's no obvious team should definitely win which doesn't mean there's no team that's the best but it's just like you can't like guarantee that they'll win on the t- t- I just default to the team that look like they're the best battle tested ones it's why I've always picked Faze Clan FMC the last couple of years because you sort of know what they're capable of whether they're on their form or not like you know how they're going to play and you also crucially like Faze Clan you know that they're not just going to lose like three maps in a row and just get blasted out of the server like they're always going to be in a game like the Nuggets were that team for me but I will say it actually makes perfect sense that they've lost already like first of all they I, I, I pointed this out even when they won that series mate everyone who was just like sort of fucking shard and freud and maxing on lebron like let's be real the nuggets that was a really close series like they could have lost that se- that gate series too like it was loads of really close games that yeah the lakers couldn't close out and then lebron didn't close out so you could always laugh like Haha, he fucking sucks but it's like but it was really close so i already yeah. think if you actually thought like it was guaranteed the nuggets win you were delusional like there was people going the other way to be fair Maui. as soon as they would re- reckon the lakers people also were like they're gonna sweep them too and, and now they're even gonna lose well is it just another mickey mouse ring it's like bro they're in the first round like just fucking chill like like, calm down. Like, you know, they won one time ever. And here's the problem they have in the Nuggets, I'll tell you right now, mate, is it's actually the opposite, in my opinion, to how most people talk about their team. Because everyone's watched them beat the, the Lakers so many times now, people talk like the Nuggets is some fucking super team or something. It's like, bro, they are so heavily carried by Djokovic. Mental. Like, remember, it's something like he just scores all the time. He just all the fuck, he orchestrates the whole team. He's almost on the level of those, like, great point guards, like fucking Jason Kidd or something. It's like, I don't even know if you took this guy off this team and put any other player from his position. If the fucking offense would even run me, I feel like half the shit he's doing is like for real, just literally like genius fucking reads and stuff like that. There's no way that's like a defensive, like an option in his offense. Like, And then the guy might just cut behind for no reason and then you just do an overhead behind the back pass. Like that shit he's just doing because he's a genius. So I will say, if you look at what happened to them, right, this is actually why people, were, this is why I know if you're a LeBron fan from last year, you were living in Cloud Cook Land, if you thought this was some like unbeatable team that like oh my god how could anyone ever beat them because it's like if anything that Jamal Murray run never made fucking sense he was always like that was like he was having like the two series of his entire life last year boys he was pretty pretty good against the Lakers but even then he had games that were dodgy and what you see here is this mate when he doesn't actually come and have a big series they're not some unbeatable team like they're still good they have look they have the best player in the NBA and crucially has the ball has had every possession that would give you a chance to win games but I actually think it's totally plausible that they lost in this particular way there's not there's nothing like insanely shocking if the thing that's shocking to me like I say is that a team with like inexperience at some of the star positions can beat them but I actually think the Nuggets were slightly overrated as a team mate. like Jokic is mega he did nothing wrong whatsoever but it just shows on his team how fucking variable the rest of them are like I'll tell you what the guy you referenced earlier that Michael Porter Jr where the fuck was he in this series mate he just completely abandoned his team like it, that's one of the guys where if he even just had like two good games Games more than he did they win the whole series i mean the at the end of it i felt when, what i was seeing with michael porter jr was kind of like reminiscent of how in the 2016 finals harrison barnes was just clanking it from the, the corner like like michael porter jr is just like it's kind of just like a three and d guy pretty athletic like he can be a lob threat but then in this one it was just when you put those guys in corner corner three shooting positions and then you're just passing like dumping the ball to them sometimes they're open and like it's just it's just nerves the nerves get to him like he's not hitting at the same clip that he would in a lower pressure situation or when you're front running when you're just like oh i can just make this or miss this i don't know like if it's a high pressure moment i've i've always felt like the nuggets or at least in the last year and a half or so were the team that just can settle themselves down they can put the their best foot forward they can like the the offense will be orchestrated by Jokic, and everybody's going to find a comfort in that but what was so impressive about the the T- timberwolves in this one is that they just finally pushed the nuggets to be a little bit off kilter like like murray also didn't really he like he was so weirdly streaky like 
in that game seven, he had an incredible first half, but then he kind of fell off a bit in the second half. And most of the time, it was quite the opposite, where he'd show up a bit in the second half, but in the first half, he doesn't really do a lot. I mean, by the end of the entire uh, series, it, it really felt like, to me, the second best player, if I if I were like, you know, just, just taken out and I didn't know anything about the Nuggets, I would say, okay, yeah, Jokic is their best player. I would have probably said Aaron Gordon was their best second best player. Yeah, Aaron Gordon was absurd. Like, he was, the way he was playing and like just making these like fadeaway turnaround jump shots and stuff, I was like, what? there was like, I think it was game four and I was like, did did Kobe Bryant possess Aaron Gordon's body or something like how is he making these mid-range shots so consistently and so it, it feels like the the thing that's been so impressive about the Nuggets in the past is that they are absolutely not a super team they are a well-constructed roster where they have one keystone player in Jokic who is doing so much for that team in terms of and in, in terms of orchestrating making sure that the open man is always found and also if he needs to he can be a bailout bucket himself he can just kind of lower his shoulder a little bit push against the opposing center find any kind of shot but when it comes to the supporting cast many of these guys are just basically put plucked onto this roster because they're essentially pretty good defenders and then they can shoot threes. Like, that to me has been the entire ethos of this Nuggets construction. And then you have a couple various idios idiosyncrasies in some of their play. Like, Aaron Gordon is an insane lob threat all of a sudden. Uh, Jamal Murray can create off the dribble himself. But if you look at some of the other people on the team, like like Contavious Caldwell-Pope, uh, Justin Holiday, Michael Porter Jr., they're a little bit, they get a little bit more lost in the weeds in terms of what their true abilities are. It's just that all of these guys do have some semblance of a three ball. Like they, that's kind I think that's like the bare minimum re requirement for the Nuggets is play good defense and at least shoot the three from like 35% or better. And that's, how, that's to me how they put this together. And, and that's why it's not like, like, there's not a lot of guys that can create. They're just doing it with a lot of movement. Like, in terms of watching the actual game and, like, like in terms of watching, like, the offensive structure and the flow of what they're doing on the court, I always felt like the Nuggets were playing better offensive basketball in terms of movement. But then down the line, it's just those those support players just weren't, they weren't ready for the moments. By the way, this is one of those times where people are going to think we're just revisiting an old topic. But holy fuck, bro, I nailed it completely. Remember on that last episode, I pointed out that all these people were saying, bro, I can't even believe I actually got this one 100% nailed on. I told you that there were all those dickhead people that were like, ha ha. Jokic is going to be loving it. He was being defended by Anthony Davis, but now he's only got Rudy Gobert. And mate, you saw that like whole week on NBA Twitter was in intolerable, right? When the fucking Nuggets finally bounced back, by the way, I also predicted that would obviously happen. Like the idea like the Nuggets were just going to fucking get smoked every game in a row with the best. By the way, I don't think people understand. Like we've almost got to change the fucking concept of the term best player in the NBA. Like mate, some of my favorite players were just pure scorers, right? This guy is the one where it's like, you can't stop this player having impact he literally is the one either making his own offense or everyone else's offense every time down like when a player is as smart as that like they can miss the shot but like you can't stop them having a good game so the idea you're going to lock them down already again like have you just had your first beer but it's worse than that bro because right people for real you saw that one game where fucking Jokic was mega cooking it might have been game three I think right that's the one where everyone all of NBA Twitter for real the take was this guy's <laughs> How could the fucking go bear be the defensive player of the year when he's not even locking him down? And it's like, mate, I tell you right now, if you're like a true basketball fan, just go and watch highlights of this game and only watch that matchup. Just watch when Rudy Gobert defends Jokic, right? Mate, I actually thought, for real, like, I've, like, I'm actually in, like, a fucking CIA black site, and they're just trying to break me mentally now. Like, this can't be real. <laughs> because if you watch these highlights, Maui, this is some of the best defended players you will ever see yeah. against a dominant big man, who, by the way, if you even watch the shots he's making, bro, he's not making any easy shots or dunks. These are all, like, torture, torture rack, like back and forth, like dream shake into like a floater, like from six feet out. Like, like I'm talking like the skill level on the shots he's making is bonkers, Maui. Like for real, if I was the coach of the Thunderbolt, all I would say at the end of that game, the Thunderbolts is just like, great job. Look, we can't, if you do that again, I guarantee, yeah. by the way, we're going to win this series. Like if you, like Rudy Gobert, 
gold star, you nailed it. I can't even believe that the actual take on Twitter was one, he was bad and that that like invalidated him being defensive player of the year. By the way, already, please stop saying like playoffs can invalidate regular season awards, but we'll put that to one side. And then the other thing was people for real, no joke, were using this to show that like, here's what I didn't get though, Bowie. What I don't get for real is they never said like the player who would have locked him down. Like as far as I can tell, right. Rudy Gobert's problem is that he's not like Checks notes, Bill Russell from the 1960s <laughs> or Wilt Chamberlain. Like, oh, I don't know if I'm being kind to you, Zoomers. I don't know, like, prime Hakeem Olajuwon from 1994. So we're like, what player? Bro, bro what player yeah. do they think is locking Jokic down in these games? And then also, like, obviously, we're going to talk about the defense in general. I thought the defense was fabulous in this series for the Timberwolves, oh, including yeah. Rudy Gobert. By the way, this is how you know for real, Maui. We've already, just by having better analytical skills, transcended basketball analysis because if you go back to some past episodes we talked about the fact that Rudy Gobert's never been some like one-on-one -on -one, like lockdown monster like it was always like help defense push the guy make him pass the ball I actually I, I actually for real that take uh, the NBA Twitter take versus my take is night and day I can't believe how how different it could be I, I would figure they'd only be a tiny bit off like they actually thought his defense was shit I'm, my mind is blown what do you think Rudy, I mean, the <laughs> the way that the Nuggets play defense during this entire series was so interesting as a whole. Like, the way that they decided to just throw Carl Anthony Towns. By the way, I have to say, shout out to Carl Anthony oh, Towns and how he guarded Jokic yeah. for so much of this. Because they put him as the primary defender for practically the entire series on Jokic. Sometimes it would swap to, like, yeah, it would be Gobert occasionally. Sometimes it was Naz Reed. Uh, occasionally, just by a switch, it'd be, like, Jaden McDaniels. And then... Like, they all got abused. They all got abused. It's just about limiting the level of abuse that you you have, from, you can receive from Jokic. And for, like, for whatever reason, like, I think this is the best defense I've ever seen Carl Anthony Towns played. And again, I watched a lot of regular season games for this team. So I don't, I don't, I, I feel like the way that he was able to just kind of stand against him, because I think the one thing that I noticed about, about Gobert that I would say is, like, it's not like, I mean, he can only do so much. You could, I'll say this, another, another disclaimer. You can only do so much in this league right now. Like if you, it, you like the offensive player gets such a more friendly whistle than the defensive player right now. Like it's like Jokic is like lowering his shoulder into Gobert. And then he's able to like, then with the space he created by lowering his shoulder, he just gets a free shot. Like there's only so much you can do there. But the thing that was impressive about Kat is that when Jokic would do that, like Kat would just give no ground sometimes. He would actually, and the thing is that, I mean, it came to bite him. Like, like Kat got into foul trouble in a lot of these games. Like he was consistently just do it, pushing it to the absolute limit of what he could do there. But yeah, this kind of is, um, it is similar, like, when it's like, what can he do? What what can you do to stop Jokic? The Timberwolves did what they could. Like, they really did what they could, and they minimized their, their losses to the maximum a degree. It is like, it's funny you bring up Hakeem, because it's like, like, there was only so much David Robinson could do to stop Hakeem. Hakeem's was a little bit more flashy back in that 90s series where Robinson won MVP, and then Hakeem, like, still schooled him with, like, a lot of great footwork and, like, how nimble he was around the basket. Jokic just has a couple of moves that, to me, they're a lot more brutish where you just you just kind of like push you just use your weight you throw it around a little bit more you get the defender off of off of their balance a little bit more whereas Hakeem was a lot more stylish and a lot more about finesse and that's personally why I like Hakeem more when I watched his gameplay it was just so much so much more eye catching but Jokic is similarly incredibly efficient so I think the Timberwolves in general like have to be incredibly proud of the fact that also when I, I want to mention like the fact that in that defensive player of the year conversation we had before the playoffs started, I brought up J.D. McDaniels because I was watching the Timberwolves so much and I thought that he was also very good in this series defensively, like really good wing defender overall, probably was a reason that Jamal Murray had a little bit of difficulty there and then people like Aaron Gordon, they still got there sometimes, but a couple of the wings had a little bit more difficulty on the on the Nuggets because McDaniels was, he can just, he has such a huge wingspan. He can just be in so many places at once. I mean, that's why I actually do agree. I saw one of the games, I think it was Jokic in an interview, even said something like that he actually thinks the Timberwolves is one of the teams sort of beat, built to beat the Nuggets. And actually, I thought of agree with them because if you think about it, Maui, the players you're listing off there, think how fucking tall the front line of the Timberwolves is. Like, it's not just Rudy Gobert or fucking Cal Anthony Towns. Like, I think Jada McDaniels is like 6'2", 
Ted or something like that. Like yeah. fucking yeah, Naz really Reed's right up there. Like their whole fucking yeah. team. Like that's one of the reasons why we talked about this on that episode. By the way, that episode is aged like the finest wine now. Because <laughs> it was only after game one, but one of the point, two of the points I was making was one, this just shows you what other teams couldn't do against the Nuggets, which is play team defense. And as I told you, mate, if you play team defense, like, look, he actually did do it in this series. Obviously, he didn't win, but he, he gave it his best shot. Like, Jokic's natural way just isn't to be selfish, like I said. He, he is always good. Like, essentially, like, that is what the Wolves did to win. They made people like Jamal Murray beat them from the outside. They didn't, and they couldn't do it, and so they won the series. But yeah, the other thing I would say as well is, like, the other thing to me was, I was also waiting for the time for, when the Wolves would have one bad game, though, when their backs were against the ball, which you finally saw. The difference is, though, that approach does work, though. Like I say, like, they had loads of tall players. They played great help defense. They actually even just literally did what we mentioned on the episode, which is you just do, like... This is why people say that famous line about defense. That the reason why, by the way, we all look down on people like LeBron or Luca if they don't play like hard nose defense, is because it isn't about skill. It's mainly about effort. Like it really is about consciously deciding. Like I'm actually going to stay in front of this guy all the time, which is all the Wolves did. By the way, they didn't. There's no way they had some like insane whiteboard scheme where it's like when he goes here, you trap him. Like you'd love to believe that, but like a lot of it just looked for real, man. Like they just stayed in front of you the whole time, and then they just made you decide. Like right. What are you going to do? Are you going to like force a foul? Are you going to pass the ball? And that worked. Like, here's the only thing, though. I have to ask this question, though. Let's just get the question out of the way right at the beginning now, which is based on what we've seen just thus far, people should be picking the Wolves to win the championship. So is there a reason you don't? Uh, do you pick them to win the championship, Marino? Yeah, I, pick, I, I do pick them to win the championship. I do. I um, The only thing that I have hesitation about is that, like, I mean, like, it's kind of like if you gave me fair odds, if you gave me 50, like 25, 25, 25 odds of the Pacers, the Celtics, the Mavs, and the Wolves, the only reason if I had to put money down on those odds is that I would just say, well, I think the Celtics are more likely to beat the, the Pacers. So that's kind of the thing. I think that the Wolves are the favorites to beat the Mavs. And then based off of how they've been playing, I think that they are better than the Celtics in a few ways. I... I feel like the defense is just so that the only the only thing is that the matchup for me with the um, the matchup with the the Celtics is a little bit odd. If 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 I I don't I'm not really sure if they are as good as guarding like nimble wing defenders with good ball movement as much as they are clogging up lanes against a, a bigger force. Like if the Wolves played like Anthony Davis or Jokic, I think they want to, fe they'd feast on those kinds of things more than they do someone like Tatum, who is a little bit more agile. And I feel like the, like the Brown Tatum duo is a little, it'll be, I'll just say like the Mavs series, I think they can, they can make it work because I think, uh, Edwards, Conley, even McDaniels can follow. I think they can follow, uh, Kyrie decent enough, but I think that Tatum's just taller and I think that's going to be a little bit harder for them because he's quite nimble and he rises up really high where, and I also think that having Cat and Gobert on the floor at the same time against the Celtics could be a little bit more awkward because you don't have as many, as much of a true center, uh, on the Celtics that they always need to run. Like the Celtics are more comfortable playing a smaller ball style, which I'm not sure I'm not as confident about the Wolves matching up with that. So I would still, I, 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 I'll just say like, I wanted to pick the Wolves for a long time and I wanted to pick them before the playoffs as my team. And so I kind of want them to like, kind of want this more than I think my head is always agreeing with it. No, I actually sort of agree with you. I think the big problem for me is just stylistically. Like, I actually think if you look at the teams that, like, could potentially be a threat in the playoffs, the reason why the way that the Timberwolves are built is cool is if you ended up playing a series, Maui, where it was like you had played the Lakers in the first round, then the Nuggets now, and then in the finals you play someone like could have been the Bucks with Giannis, could obviously be like Embiid on the 76. If you play all the big men, I actually think this team would have a very good chance to win the NBA title. I'm with you, though. I think the problem is this, Maui which is that style of defense they have is going to be way less effective against teams that are mainly just wing stars, though, in my opinion. So the problem is, I actually do think, if you look, like the Mavs themselves have a chance to beat them now. That's like a very plausible one. Even though I think, personally, the Mavs have limped through every series. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. They are here. And the team they're playing, by the way, it's not like Anthony Edwards is insanely experienced. He could have a couple of bad games again that open the door right for you. So I actually think the Mavs have a chance to make the finals. And actually, I do also think, like, I, I would just pick... To 
pick, pick the Celtics at this point in time. One, like you say, it's just way more likely they're in the finals. It's very unlikely the Pacers are going to beat them. And then two, I actually also think the, hate, the real reason people hate the Celtics is because they think for people like Tatum, it's just an easy job because your roster's so deep. Well, you're not wrong. The roster is insane. I actually think the GM of this team, the two best GMs in the last, like, uh, of the last two seasons, in my opinion, is this guy and then what, like the Thunder or the Clippers guy? Like, it's probably the Thunder guy. Like, it probably is. Like, I think these GMs, are, these are fantastic GM teams. So the funny thing is, we can get to the Celtics in a second, but I actually think half the things people critique about them are just, they're just mad that there aren't more contenders in the East. Like, it's not the Celtics' <laughs> fault. Like, they just have to do what they do. Right? So if we talk a bit about the Wolves. Like, here's the main problem I have. It's like, like, basically, I actually do think, logically, they probably should have lost this series. I think they actually should have lost to the Nuggets, Maui. Like, I actually think, for real, that game two win probably was the one that won them the whole series. Like, if that was just a 1-1 split at the beginning, I think they would have just lost in six, personally. Like, I actually also thought, even in some of the games, like, I'll give up to Anthony Edwards. He even had that one game they lost. I can't remember if, I think it was a game four or whatever. We actually did just fucking go off again, but they lost this time. But aside from that, like, it takes so much from this player for them to win a big playoff game. So, like, I have to say, Maui, even though I think, as a team, they are actually a better team than the Mavs, I'm really worried the Mavs are going to beat this squad, mate. What are your thoughts? Mm, no, I think I think the I think the Wolves are the favorite. I mean, I have the Wolves as the favorites. I would say for this one, I might even say again Wolves in seven, but I'm a little bit more confident, so I'll do Wolves in six in this one for Wolves for Wolves over the Mavs. I feel like the the thing that's really nice about the the Wolves is that the help defense for like what's what's interesting is that when I watched Kyrie, I think Kyrie will be able to beat Conley and um, Edwards on the first step sometimes. And he'll sometimes just, I mean, he's just fantastic in terms of his handles. And so sometimes he'll even trick them a little bit. But I feel like the way that they're going to cluster the inside is going to be so, it's just like, it's just like you're, as soon as Kyrie gets a breath of fresh air as he like rounds the corner on Conley or beats Edwards on that first step is like, it's McDaniels is like seven is like his 10 foot wingspan. It feels like it's like you're running into trees. You're running into like, like literally like an evergreen forest of Gobert, cat and McDaniels. And these guys are surprisingly nimble footed. And so that's the one thing where I think if, it, if like Kyrie beats them on the first step, he's going to have to make a goddamn lot of mid range shots. And I think the same thing about Luca, like Luca's going to press up against McDaniels. He's going to press up against cat. But the thing is that, those guys, well, like usually the thing that's interesting about Luca is he's got like a low center of gravity. He's oversized for a guard, but he's not oversized against guys that are six foot ten. And if they put people that are like six foot ten with those kinds of like seven five wingspans on him, like they will block some of his shots. Like he's gonna have to create a lot of contact. This series is gonna. I'm already sure this is going to happen. There's going to be a lot of bitching. There's going to be a lot of bitching coming out of Luca because he's going to think like, how can they like? He's going to start contact. He's going to he's they're going to he's going to try to fade away from them, and then they're going to either like they're going to like maybe put their their hands somewhere around his waist when they're defending him, and then they're going to block his shot, and Luca's going to think I got fouled or something like that. But it's like, hey, you if you're initiating that kind of contact, the MB, the refs have to draw a line somewhere, and I think that he's going to have some shots blocked in this series that he's not used to having, but. He's still going to get his. Like, don't get me wrong. I think Luca will probably still average like 27, but that's very different than the 35 that he would if the team were more undersized. Like, my problem is, I actually don't think the Mavs is a very good team. Like, I've said it the whole time through the whole mm. playoffs. Like, I think the Clippers could absolutely beat them. They, but yep. anyway, they definitely could have lost the series to the Thunder. Like, one of the problems is, though, like, they actually have that factor that, as much as I hate it, it's a sports ball angle, but it is real. Which is, once you just win enough games, though, even if you're not the better team, like, you actually believe it's possible. Like, this team yep. actually really believes they're going to the finals. I'm telling you guys. Like, I can just tell by the way, like, like they, <laughs> yeah. they don't look like they're apologetic about bullshit in the series like I thought in that last series by the way that fucking PJ Washington guy saved Luka fucking Doncic's ass yep, in the same yep, way Kyrie in the yep. series before saved his ass when he was having all those dodgy ass games like Luka here's what's sad right this is again where you know NBA Twitter it's like it's just like esports fucking fans at this point in time like the takes are so bad like bro if you read NBA Twitter you'd think it was like actually, you'd think for real it was Luka that was having the run that Anthony Edwards is you'd think he was like murking the whole NBA it's like bro this isn't even one of his better 
runs. Like, he's actually had a bunch of injuries and he's just looked sus in a bunch of games. Like, mate, the amount of games Luka Doncic has had in this playoffs where for real he makes like seven baskets and then does nothing in most of the game is mental. But they've won like half these games, mate. It's really crazy. So essentially, the point I'm making is this. If they win counterintuitively, Maui, like, I actually don't think they're that good. But the problem is when I look at this particular opponent, though, that's why, like I say, I just think the strengths aren't, there's the, aren't, aren't as big a problem for this particular team. Like, I actually think, by the way, Kyrie will just destroy them in this series. I think I don't think anyone on the fucking Wolves can handle that player. I actually think the joke of his career, I alluded to it in the past one, was I actually think, sadly... There's only two types of fan. There's the 14 year old Glazer who doesn't know basketball. So when they go, but his handle and the way, so you don't know anything about people's handle. Mate, you haven't even seen like a modern day player, Rucker Park player. Never mind like fucking some guard from the 70s that you never watched. So like that guy already makes everyone hate Kyrie because you're already telling them people who actually watch basketball, like, he's by far the most skilled player ever. But it's like, how would you know fucking Pip Squeak? Like, you've seen four <laughs> players. But the sad thing is, then there's the other side that do that thing like he was just robbing to LeBron's B Batman and said, well, that one, that's definitely not true, by the way, and was never <laughs> true at all. Like, I'll, I, that's, you know, that the way they treated Kyrie is almost as bad as, like, Kobe during that first three peak mate. Have you ever seen the numbers he put up in 2016? Bro, the thing I'll never understand is, he won that game seven. I've never understood that take ever from LeBron fans. Bro, they talk like LeBron did all those actions. They, like, did anyone else? I saw LeBron just, like, unable to make a basket for, like, four minutes or something. Like every other con in the game, by the way. So the point I'm bringing it back to is this. I actually think Kyrie, un unironically, is underrated in this generation. I think he's another one of those players where people think his ring doesn't count. And then sadly, he was just injured way too much. So he became sort of irrelevant, right? I actually think, though, if you can take every other narrative and take it out and just watch the player who can play it now in the NBA. Bro, right this second, there's only four teams remaining in the basketball in the NBA. Dude, are there even three players as good as Kyrie Irving left in the fucking playoffs? Not probably not. Like this guy for real no, can just win no. any of these games he wants. So I have to say, even though like I actually like I didn't have either these teams making the conference finals. This is where my real worry is. This on paper, Maui, I do think the Timberwolves should win. I actually think Anthony Edwards is as good as anyone on the Mavs right now. But the problem is this though. That's where the experience angle kills me. I actually think, like I alluded to earlier, I think for real the Mavs are somehow just going to steal this and make the final. Look, I think they're going to lose to the Celtics in the final. And be very unpopular for doing so. But I actually think they're going to win this series, mate. It might be six games, might be seven, but they're going to steal it. I don't know how, but this they've already walked on water so many times, I think it's possible. Meanwhile, the problem on the Wolves' side is, like, if Anthony Edwards can really keep doing what he's been doing so far, fuck the, this particular ring. He's going to just be, like, one of the top 20 players to ever play basketball. But, like, I have to see it happen. You know, it's like the Z-Woo factor. He could do it. It looks like he might, but I've got, I've got to keep it... Let's see it keep happening. Let's see it happen in the next round, too. I want to just say that for the... I mean, yeah, we're centering it around Luca, Kyrie, and Edwards, but, like, I'm, I'm like, when I'm thinking of the potential matchups here, I'm actually thinking about, like, Who's even going to pick up Carl Anthony Towns? Because this guy showed a lot of skill, actually, in that series. And I kind of, I underrated Cat for a long, or I, I don't think I underrated Cat. I just don't think he really showed he was that guy. Isn't it implied, Bowie? Like, this is the take I've always gotten, not just through the press, but, like, if you watch his game. The implication I've always had with this player is that one of those people who just doesn't, try as hard as they could if you know what I mean like he yes. coasted a little bit on talent because he was mega coming out of like fucking college mate but he never quite hit the heights ever wanted like the joke is he if people don't know if you're a modern fan he was supposed to for real be a player like an MB type guy who just dominate yep. the NBA but he, he kind of just stayed just below the surface didn't he I would say that that's that's um we're, we're what I'm seeing from him now is that now that he's playing on a team that's playing legitimately winning basketball I'm getting a little bit more of that of, of what we wanted from him though. That's what's, that's what's impressive about him. It's like he's, he was leading into the, that series or the, the semifinals. He was like the highest percentage three point shooter and at volume two in the entire playoffs. Uh, he was like, in terms of his range, like he stretches the floor really well. And also he has a couple of moves inside. Like he can do some nice drop steps here and there. He can get around defenders. And I look at the defenders for the Mavs and like the Mavs are, Kyrie can torch the Timberwolves like he is going to be insanely fast hard to deal with and help defenders aren't always the best thing on Kyrie and you don't really want to always play system defense because if he has a breath of fret like if he gets any airspace at all he just sinks to the mid-range shot it's totally fine for him he's cool with that but when I look at it on the flip side it's like 
the Mavs are undersized versus Carl Anthony Towns. Like Carl Anthony Towns is like a legit seven feet tall. And in terms of the starting lineup for the Mavs, I'm thinking about who's going to guard him. It's like, is it going to be, is it going to be PJ Washington? But he's six, seven. So that's like a few five. No, they have a way small team. Yeah. Is is it? Yeah. Gafford six foot 10. But then also like the, the thing is that the Mount, the, the wolves are like, Gobert doesn't really ever become a huge threat on offense, but he can't, if, if they just dump him the ball and he's inside, like he'll dunk over a dude that's six foot seven, you know, like he doesn't, he doesn't really exert over exert himself. He doesn't force it. But if that guy cheats off for a second because of the spacing or something like that, like they can still throw it to him. He can be a lob threat. He can be a lob threat and in a best case scenario. So I'm, I'm also, and also like the thing about Gobert at the end of that, uh, that series is that in game, in game seven, actually, like he was hitting, he was hitting his free throws too. So you can't just like, he can't just grab the ball. You foul him and you're like, good. We got like a 50% shooter at the line. Like he, he actually stepped it up and he was shooting some nice, uh, I mean, he was nailing the shots that he needed to in that game. <laughs> By the way, even though this might be one of those Wikipedia entry things or someone just didn't notice it, Maui on basketball reference, shout out to whoever put this on. Where on Kyrie Irving's page, they do that thing where it's like, you know, they're like aliases that you have. So, you know, Nicknames. Col- yeah. yeah, Kobe's would be, you know, the black man. So they put one in there where if people know the reference, this is actually straight fire. So there was a player in the 70s, if people don't know, who for like political reasons renamed himself, kind of like Meta World Peace. He named himself World Be Free. So as a joke, someone's put one of Kyrie's aliases as World Be Flat, which is like... <laughs> 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 you, know, you know what? Fair play to whoever. If that's, by the way, one, if that's actually a real thing, ever comes on that's funny in itself but whoever put that on that page well done you, you, you know like you, co- <laughs> you cooked it to perfection on that one i'll give you I'll, you'll say a michelin star you get for that that's well done you cooked on that that's one. insane that's uh, i've never the, the, <laughs> the, 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 the also the one i the one i've heard of before that is the flat mamba that's pretty good too that's pretty good too that's pretty good too i got fair play on that one i appreciate yeah. that yeah, yeah, yeah. That's By like, the way, though, are... I, I actually do want to ask you what you think about that, though, because as I've alluded to earlier, I actually feel like people haven't noticed that, if anything, I think the problem the West has had in the NBA this season, Maui, is when you have too many good teams, Like it's like the major playoff bracket of PGL. Well, the joke is no one had phases as the number one team to get out of it. So when you get out of it, sometimes actually a weaker team counterintuitively can get out because of what an insane, like, fucking, like, steel cage death match it is to even climb out. So the, way, the reason I alluded to it earlier, I want to ask you now, was this like I said mate it's not going to be until the Celtics lift that trophy like this that every hater in the NBA is going to realise like oh wait it actually was a really good team because bro this is where like fans it's like I say it I'm actually almost shocked by how bad like takes are in sports because everyone laughs at esports fans because they think everyone's just 14 and doesn't know anything about the game like some of these people are supposed to have watched basketball for years I'll tell you the weirdest take I'll give you a great example of one right now is right you know whenever they talk about Brown they go Ah, he can only dribble with one hand. It's like, that's been true the whole time, but no one can stop him. Yeah, yeah. Like, think about it. Guys, I agree with you. There are clips that are really funny where he, like, dribbles it off his fucking foot or whatever, you know. But he doesn't have any problem in the game getting a shot all day long with one hand. Like, that's one of those ones where it's like, you're not wrong. You have identified something. But that, like, that that fact doesn't somehow make the rest of reality not exist. I mean, it's such a weird take to me because what it's a bit like the take, like I said earlier, of, like, Gobert's just getting cooked by him. It's like, everyone would get cooked by these moves, though. What, like, what do, what's the alternative? Because that's one, one of those angles I really don't get like as far as I can tell look I get the idea people might hate Tatum because they think he's a choker that's a legit take by the way he actually has had insane teams the last few years probably should have a ring by now that's that's totally all fine but I don't get takes like that where it's like oh but the the, the actual because essentially what they're doing Maui is the take that like they're sort of just pretending the whole team are frauds or something you know what I mean like I just wonder how do they think they tricked the NBA how did they get all these wins how do they keep winning all these (laughs) that's what like that's the part that it's not a movie guys it's real life like if they're not that good they just get Forced eventually. What is it? What's the deal? I feel like, well, I think people have underrated Jalen Brown just because, like, I mean, one, he's played second fiddle to Tatum for such a long time. But, like, I, I think Brown, when he came into the league, to me, wasn't really a create off like a cre- he doesn't really create his own shot other than drives like he felt more like a slasher to me at the beginning but then when watching the Celtics more recently he does do a lot of creating off the dribble in terms of like he can create and shoot a pull up like sure. that that was something where I felt before it was more like 
you know, I just felt like I was watching a really poor man's Dwayne Wade. And now it's like, well, he's kind of leveled up the some of the weak aspects. Like, again, like these players, they they know what the critiques of them are. And sure, he he's maybe like doesn't doesn't really dribble with his offhand that well. But like in terms of the other offensive tools that he needed to add to his arsenal, he to me has done that. Oh, like he, he he can finish in the mid range with a little bit of a bump or a contact right there. Like he's taken up all the little tricks that a lot of other people in the league have added to their game he's like he's not just a slasher anymore like he's not just an overly athletic wing so i feel like that and he, and he also plays damn good defense like the the scary thing about like the celtics is that if they face the wolves or they face the mavs in the in the finals Jalen Brown could literally be the second pl- or third best player in that series sure. no matter who they're against like he's he might be better than cat uh, I test wise, he's not better than Kyrie, but he plays better defense than Kyrie. So he could flat out be the third best player in that. And then the Celtics will just win because they have their two best stars versus the two best stars of any other team are just better. Like that's, that's not, that's not even unlikely at all. So uh, I, yeah, I don't know what the, I, I don't know, know what the team current, is just like, so deep is. there. Like, like yeah. aside from narratives, yeah. like what reason you've got to hit on this team? If you're just like basketball, it's a pretty fucking insanely put together team. And also, mate, it's not like they put it together like LeBron style, like some super team for, they just, the GM no. just killed it. He just did a really, it's like the Warriors dynasty. It's only when yep. they had Durant, you're allowed to get mad. Before that, they just did everything by the book the way you're supposed to. Yep. Yeah, exactly. What, what do you want? Exactly. They, <laughs> yeah, they got lucky in just drafting like the most like, the strongest, like, like athletic, high potential wing. And they both blossomed really well between Tatum and Brown. Because I actually do mm. think like that. That's the reason, sadly, though, I am bummed out that the Nuggets lost. Because I actually do think the Nuggets Celtics, which was supposed to be the fucking finals before, but didn't happen. Like, I actually mm. think that would have been a really great series. Like, because if you notice, one of the things that I'm holding back on, this is why I have a hard time actually even picking uh, against the fucking shitty Mavs in the Western Conference finals is, I do think, unfortunately, that like even more extreme than what we're seeing currently in Counter-Strike, guys, or people like Maus, I do think the NBA is and, and most American sports are incredibly fucking harsh for like the experience factor like I think eventually if you're not like super battle tested it just happens eventually you have that one really bad game that one really bad half you just have like a fucking someone has an awesome game against you and it just breaks people mentally like it's so like the the amount of times I've seen teams fail to bounce back from that is mental so unfortunately I get really worried anytime people are like less experienced etc so like it's why I say the Anthony Edwards angle is easy for me the reason I pick against is because if he actually does it then he just is like one of the best players probably Together in the NBA, and if he doesn't, then he can just get there in a year or two as well. That's okay. He's still fucking super young. He's already had, by the way, an awesome playoff run so far. It's just the problem is you can't possibly know how he's going to play in the conference finals. He's never been in one. He's never been close. He's just a young guy, and he. Yeah, he's still. Is he twenty two or twenty three? Either way, like he's he's practically of of star players left in there. He's the youngest, and it's not even really even close. Like I feel, I think um, there's a couple people like in there, like. I think, well, how, how let me check how old Luca is. I, I think he's no, like, Luca's already, like 26 or something. Isn't he like decently in? Let me have a look. I think mid, sure yeah, mid 20s at least. Mid 20s at least. I think he's uh 25 or 20. He's 20. Actually, he's, yeah, he's 25. Oh, he's 25. Okay. Yeah, he's 25. So, like, Luca, the thing is that Luca is a little bit more battle hardened at this point. Like, he was in the Western Conference Finals in 2022. So, oh, he's had loads I of know, games. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's the one thing with, with Edwards right now where it's like, I, I'll say this. One thing that I thought was really impressive about Edwards in that game seven, especially was that he didn't really get his own in terms of points, but every time that there was a trap coming his directions, because it was very clear that the game plan for the, the nuggets in game seven was don't, it was kind of like anybody but Edwards. And it really did limit Edwards. He couldn't, he, I don't even think he broke 20 points in that game seven, but he never, he never had a moment where he got too flustered to me where it was like, oh, you're making mistake after mistake. Like, even when I watched Curry back in, like, 2014-15, e- even in the final and in the finals in 2016, if the cl- the Cavs came at him with a double, he had a very hard time passing out of those doubles. He had a lot of a lot of turnovers. But when it came to Anthony Edwards in that in that game seven, he stayed really cool, stayed, was able to just pass it to the next guy. And also, the one thing is that when the T-Wolves recognize... that This is why I think the T-Wolves will win versus the Mavs, is that even when they threw that new defensive scheme at him, the T-Wolves had an instant response. The team, the teammates... And this is why it's so nice to have someone like Mike Conley on your team who knows, oh, they're about to double my star, star shooting guard. I'm going to just make sure I get an angle so he can pass to me and then I'll think about what my swing pass is after this one. It's like that... 
that release valve is so beneficial because I remember if it's just all young players, which is kind of what happened to the Thunder, is that if it's all young players and that first guy gets flustered, they don't know how to help sometimes. They sometimes just feel like they get stuck. They kind of slow down themselves. They're like, oh, we didn't we didn't game plan for this. We just wanted to run whatever whatever high screen play we wanted to run. But if they if they trap that, then they just kind of lost it. They just didn't know what to do next. And that's why like that's why you usually think veteran savvy is going to come out on top they'll make those little if they have to make a live adjustment that the coach doesn't help, have to tell him to do that's why you trust chris paul in a late game situation like he's not going to turn it over even if he doesn't get the shot off he's going to find that outlet that, that bounce pass between those two defenders he's always going to get it off and and i was i was impressed i thought edwards i thought edwards might struggle with that and he did in terms of his getting his own scoring output but not really as bad in terms of turnovers I also think people don't realize just how fucking young the Wolves squad in general is. The problem is you think of people like Carl Anthony Downs, like the older players. Bro, he's only 28. He's only 28. Mm -hmm. He's not like 35 years old that you think in your brain. It's why actually, right. by the way, on the Kyrie one, I don't think people know Kyrie's only 32 now. Like, he actually still has a couple of years of his prime, potentially. In fact, the fact he was injured, he probably means he's got less wear and tear on his body, actually. Like, no, I don't think people realize, like, this team is mad young. Here's the difference, Maui. What I said earlier, where I actually do think people are, like, making a mistake if they think, like, the Thunder are just guaranteed to get back. Like, no, no, that SGA guy cooks, but the rest of the team fucking let them down, mate. Like, they probably yep. need a few upgrades. The difference is, the Wolves team, I wouldn't have minded either if they'd have lost this last round or if they lose the conference finals. They actually do look like they can be better and better each year, mate. Like, this can carry over. Like, I actually think the way they've played is pretty consistent. Like, that's also why the one good thing is this. Even if somehow the Mavs bullshit them and get the finals, they're going to have to actually play well, though. They're going to have to actually have some good games. I will say, though, I do think that was the one thing that was underwhelming with Anthony Edwards, though. It's like, if you were hoping that he was going to do some Michael Jordan shit in those last few games, he didn't. Like, he, he missed loads of shots and he, had, he struggled, etc. But that's because, this is why I always say, I actually think Michael Jordan's career ruined sports forever, mate. Because <laughs> yeah. his career was too like the movie version of his career if you know what I mean and it made people think that in real life you can just make on demand movie moments happen and you can't like the, the joke is I don't even know if Michael Jordan actually could I, th I feel like even he had a mixture of happenstance and you know like fuck it. I mean he's the first guy to do it he didn't have the same pressures of other people did he because like no one can actually do it first time guys like everyone fails the first matrix jump as it were like that's why it, like I don't cook this guy at all he didn't do anything wrong he had an awesome playoff run he could have been out already he isn't Look, to be fair, here's the way I'll say it. He has a free chance now. He has a free role to do something in the conference finals. And it's not like it's the hardest opponent. It's actually one of the easier conference finals opponents in years and years. You have a chance to make the finals. The problem is I'm trying to temper people's expectations. I think even if they make the finals, the Wolves aren't winning, in my opinion. So we'll we'll see on that one. But they're just a little bit too inexperienced. And like I say, I think stylistically, they're just better against certain teams. So I just don't think the Celtics will be one of the Wolves teams. So I think they're, again, too deep. Too deep, mate. I actually think that the Wolves will win unless Chris stops Porzingis comes back healthy. Uh, I feel like that's a big, like, I think the Celtics are fine to beat the Pacers, but having, I think, I think Chris stops is like going to be the key for them. I, that's kind of why right now I'm actually taking the Wolves to win the whole thing. Just because I feel like if Chris stops doesn't come back healthy, I don't know how cat doesn't just run amok. I feel like he's kind of a problem right now. It feels weird to put my faith into Carl Anthony Towns when he was kind of this just like too jovial player that was literally Twitch streaming at times in his career. Like this dude was playing caught on Twitch sometimes. And yet I think that he's going to be hard to stop in the NBA finals. But I something I just don't see. I just don't see the body that's going to really take him down. I, I like like no one on the Nuggets could take him down in the uh, in the in game seven. Like Carl Anthony Towns was to me like the best player for the Wolves in at least two games in that game at seven game series. So that's where that's where I think it's I just think it's possible. Um, I uh, I I have to say, though, like. I think like when it, just to like because because we're never going to talk about the Nuggets again for the for like a while like like Jamal Murray just man that dude was just so hot and cold for the Nuggets I couldn't I really I thought he was supposed to be the playoff merchant I thought he got better in the playoffs and just like regular season almost just didn't even care but like man like like his in in games like three and four that dude that dude looked like Michael Jordan. Like that dude looked insane. Like his, his mid range game, like he could just spam floaters. He could spam mid range shots. He was shooting shit from three. Like he was on fire. Everything that was, he was a flamethrower, but then other games just, just man, like 
not even necessarily always contested, just couldn't hit the same shots, didn't have that same level of direction. It was like, I don't know what it is with Jamal Murray, and I think I think there should be, I would love to just hear a little bit more of his thoughts because I don't know when he knows to turn it on or turn it off because, again, like, the first half of the of game seven, he had over 20 points. It's the only oh, time in any it. of the first halves that he did that, and then he just turned it off. Like, I think he scored nine for the rest of the game, something like that. Like, he just... He just really he fell off completely, and I I don't know what it is that when when Jokic is orchestrating the offense, if he if Yar Murray needs more touches or he needs more confidence, but it, it's one of those those ideas where is he following the system perhaps to a fault, and he thinks that something's going to emerge out of nowhere, or was it really the defense that he felt what, like was stifling him all the time because. It, it's like the Wolves did amp up and it did feel like the the Nuggets started sandbagging a little bit in the second half. Like they just thought, OK, like they were up by 20 points. Like, again, I, I don't even I don't even know if we're like emphasizing how crazy that game seven was like. Oh, was that ridiculous. was a 30 point swing, a 30 point swing in a game seven. And uh, the, the stat they were showing on the on there was the biggest halftime comeback in NBA history. Of all game sevens was like twelve or eleven points. Oh, like, remember, that was obviously a, the the other insane thing is obviously the Nuggets had home court advantage. Yeah, they had home court. You would have felt like they would have kept the energy. Like if they just got ran off the floor yes. in the opponent's building, maybe you could say, yeah, the mental aspect of that would have hurt them. Yeah. But your your own fans are right there, like cheering you on, and you just started sandbagging. You started losing energy. It just looked like they were gassed. Like if you look at the minutes, the surprising thing is like. Jokic played 46 and a half minutes in a 48 minute game. Jamal Murray, 42 and a half. Aaron Gordon, 42 and a half. Whereas on the other hand, nobody on the Wolves played over 40 minutes except for Anthony Edwards. And I feel like the depth of the Wolves is so impressive there. Like the fact that the fact I'll say like having a player like Nas Reed for the Wolves is just a godsend. Like that guy, like changed the to me, changed so much of how that game seven played out because he was able to to like being six man of the year and being able to guard the best player on the floor in Jokic, being able to guard some of the wing players for the, for the nuggets, being able to also be a three point threat. Like Nas Reed is disgusting from three point. Like I, like I, I remember he played a game against the Warriors and he started that game five for five. And I was like losing my mind because anywhere on the floor, doesn't matter. could be in the corner, could be at the high, arc, like high at the arc or anything like that. That dude is a threat from three. He is also an incredibly capable defender. He's huge. He's mobile. And that that's that little extra added depth for them just paid off so massively and he him taking up about 22 of the minutes for the starters led to at the end of the game it just felt like the the wolves had way more left in the tank i thought it was because they were younger but then really thinking about the numbers more so after the game it's like oh that's why that's probably why it was so hard in the last six seven minutes of that for the nuggets players to look like they were even even wanted to play the game I've got an angle for you, right? Two things. One, unlike you, I'm not going to put my fucking faith in Carl Anthony Towns. As I've addressed earlier, I think he's one of the most hot and cold players probably ever in the yeah. NBA. Like, he's someone who does look like his own worst enemies himself. Like, his attitude, does he care? Does he think... Like, by the way, another thing, he's always done interviews throughout the years where, even though I get the idea, like, in a in an empty gym, maybe you'd be better than these. He's one of those people who does the interview that no fan likes, where it's like, I'm actually better than this guy who won all these rings. It's like, even if actually, like, I, I sometimes... Know. sometimes Sometimes I agree, but it just you never that's never gonna go off well with kids. Like they only care about the rings, man. They don't care about what you think you could have done. So the problem is I do think he's a little bit entitled. And so my fear is that actually the fact that he might not even be playing against anyone who's like in a tough matchup directly in this series means he won't go hard enough. That's what I'm worried about. Like he'll just sort of like chill a little bit. I'll have that he'll have one of those games where he's barely guarded, but he just goes like, you know, seven for eighteen and just not that great a game, you know. So I'm worried about that, mate. One one thing that I uh, really did hate about Cat's demeanor is that in Game Seven, he's like if he has a foul call he doesn't like. I I don't know what to make of this exactly, but I don't I don't I, it does it rubs me the wrong way. He had five fouls in that Game Seven. Some of them were just like little ticky tacky fouls, like barely even grazes Jokic or whatever. And he just like he in, in, like sometimes when it's like Draymond or like even you know Luca or whatever guys that like really bitch to the refs a lot like lebron they really plead their case they really go at it and and cat just kind of like he just laughs like he just laughs he just starts laughing and he's like smiling as he's laughing at how ridiculous the call is and i'm almost like the way his demeanor in these moments sometimes feels like he's playing a ymca rec game and he's kind of just laughing that the refs called that as opposed to these 
these seemingly like born competitors, people that are almost destined for championships at one point, and they're like, they're like just going right to the ref, right in his face, saying, no, 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 like this, 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 this. And it's like, Kat just kind of like laughs it off. And I'm almost like, I wish you showed a little bit more there than just a laugh. And maybe that's what gets them through the games or anything like that. But to me in that game, like, I, I, I don't know. That's just, that's just not, that's not my favorite way to see a player carried out. And that's why, that's why I do have a little bit of hesitation with, with putting the wolves as my favorites. Cause I just, I do think cat could be the, 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 the secondary element that gets them over the line to win the championship. But then I also know who it is that I'm putting faith in. I'll give you one last angle. And the angle goes like this. I actually think what could decide this Western Conference Finals is which one of the wing players gets drawn into the Michael Jordan, I'm in the movie version of my own career. Because I actually think the player that gets egoed will be the one who fucks this series up. Because the two players that are the hmm. most obvious ones is Anthony Edwards and Luka Doncic. Because I'm with you, by the way. What you said earlier is absolutely right. Like, facing a tall team, I guarantee you Luka Doncic will take one million fucking outside bombed threes with one yeah. person hand in his face ah, the whole time that's the area where he can get egoed mate like he's already done that shit where half the reason why people overrate Luka Doncic is they talk about like random regular season games like they were like playoff like wins or something mate like, they're like and then you know he started trash talking with a guy and it was getting really testy at the end of the game and then he hit like three big shots and you're like you know you are just talking about like a game in like fucking February or something like you, if your dude actually did it in the playoffs you wouldn't be like <laughs> memorializing these games like they're the greatest part. and it'll be like a game against like the Pelicans or something you're like who gives a shit but that that the, the reason I bring this up is because Luca is one of those people who who clearly did grow up watching those like document who just wants that moment to happen so what I want to see is this Maui is if he can actually draw for real if he can get Anthony Edwards to do a game like that where they think they're in like a duel or something that's where both of them can ego shoot themselves out of this game mate because I actually do think if this is actually a rare example of a series where if you're Anthony Edwards where you don't have to get, carry every game mate if you just play well and pass well your team's really deep you've got a really good chance whereas I actually do think like it is absolutely on the wing players of the Mavericks to win this series and they both like the difference is I actually think in general Kyrie just does his thing anyway, mate. Like the good news and the bad news about Kyrie is he is a space cadet, but in the good and bad way. Like he just plays his game no matter what, mate. He doesn't even seem like he gets drawn into what the opponents do with him. I think he just does his own shit. He actually does look like it's like it seems like he's just a joy of creation, isn't he? He's just a guy who just does his moves and fucking takes what the defense offers and pulls out some amazing dribble move and his shots. I think he does that anyway. The difference is I think Luca and Anthony Edwards are both like so hardy that this is like like their fucking like you know fucking <laughs> bird versus magic moment or something so I want to see what happens with that because I do think in basketball the problem is even though like we all enjoy watching superstars take over the game I think a lot of players who aren't quite at the superstar level think they can just do that whatever they want as well and I do think that is where you ruin the basketball games in my opinion like playoff basketball is way more about the team come on I yeah I'll, I'll almost like <laughs> one up this with a take and a possible prediction for this that the Wolves can win this series without even having the best or second best player on the floor throughout the series I actually like like the fact the supporting cast for me for the Wolves like the four people behind Edwards and Cat are to me leaps and bounds better than the four people behind Kyrie and Luca I feel like like I've seen moment like j by the way Jaden McDaniels had 23 points in a game seven on the road against the reigning sure. champs like like Jaden McDaniels is a Jaden McDaniels can elevate to become a stud uh Mike Conley is just such a savvy veteran presence in terms of like facilitating be being the guy like knowing what to do to make Edwards's job easier also he's a very solid defender I mean I we like Gobert is in, is like is going to be the best overall defender on the floor. Nasri that we've already talked about at length, and then I look at the other side of things for for the Mavs, and I'm just like, am I really gonna like re re like depend on like like P like PJ Washington or Lively or or DJ like Dear Jones Jr. like or Gafford like like I don't I just see those names and I'm like I haven't seen enough from them to make me believe that if if like Luca, no joke, could go for 45 points and Kyrie could go for 30 and the rest of the team might bum out and just get like 25 more. And then the, the thing is with the Wolves, I know that's not the case. Like the Wolves, the Wolves have such a deeper roster in terms of just the amount of people that are scoring threats at all times to me makes them so much harder to deal with. And the thing is, I know, I know until game six, game six, seven, 
Luca and Kyrie, they do take defense off. Like they, in a, when I see them locked down in game six, like they did actually versus the Thunder or, and like they did versus the Clippers, that's when it's impressive. And I'm like, like you said, it's effort. They don't give that effort in the opening games. They don't, they don't always start like that. And that's when I think the Wolves are just going to torch them. If you're not going to give 100% effort from the very, the, the second that first tip off happens, then I think that you're going to face a very rude awakening that you're going to realize that there are a lot of tools available for the Wolves and they have a lot of ways to win this game or and this series without Edwards going nuclear and you're right if they bait Edwards somehow into some kind of macho e macho matchup I do think maybe he'll shoot them in the foot one time but to me that's that's like a game loss that's not that's not Edwards has been my favorite player in the series in in the NBA that's not on the Warriors because I love his demeanor so much when he's in interviews and everything like that he says all the right things he says so many of the right things all the time first of all he's funny and charismatic second of all he talks so much about the team and when he's talked about talking about like in the post game interview for game seven he said they said like you know you talked about cat but uh, we already you we maybe I think we know the answer to this is because you mentioned Cal already. Who are you going to give the game ball to? He mentioned Jaden McDaniels, and he also talks about all of his supporting cast so much so that I feel like he's been such a great leader, and the Wolves are rallying behind him. But Edwards knows he can rely on them so much too.